It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Atlanta Falcons and the Detroit Lions. And it's coming up next. First open in 2002, there's a look inside Ford Field here in downtown Detroit, the Motor City. Today we've got an intriguing NFC matchup lined up here as it'll be the Atlanta Falcons taking on the Detroit Lions. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, these Detroit Lions they won over a lot of people with the way they played under Dan Campbell last year. They started one and six, found their stride, won eight of their last 10 games and nearly got into the playoffs. And when you think back to how they almost got in that final Sunday night, going to Lambeau Field and beating the Packers, that tells you about the culture that's already been established there. All you need now is to watch this team continue to play. They're going to contend, I believe, in this season. And then for the visiting Falcons, a lot of people very eager to see the number eight pick in the draft, and that's B. John Robinson. And he's a guy I would have taken earlier in the draft. I go against the old adage, you don't take a running back in the first round. When you have one this skilled, this talented, who can run it and catch it and run your offense through him, you take him as the Falcons did. The punter Jack Fox has us ready to go, and we are underway here at Ford Field. Cordero Patterson to return it, bringing it out of the end zone. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. The Falcons ready to go to work here on offense, and at the helm in his second season, Charles, it's Desmond Ritter. The Falcons got their feet wet with Ritter during a four-game audition last season, and he did end their year with a pair of wins. Optimism reigns that he is their quarterback of the future. Now the first running back taken back in April, the former Longhorn, B. John Robinson. Call it officially a loss of two on the first play from scrimmage, second down. But that's not an easy play for a defensive end because most of his responsibility has him getting upfield and working, but how about his vision to see where the play was going? Crashed down inside and tackled him for a loss. Opening carry of the game for Cordero Patterson. And he goes across the 20 to the 22. But you gotta give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third manageable with that run. A tough spot here on their opening drive. This is third and seven. Ritter to throw it. He's got a man complete. Down to the 10. Touchdown, Falcons. Kaderil Hodge, 78 yards. And the Falcons need just three plays to go down and take the early lead. Not a bad way to start it. And I think that that was part of their script because so many teams script their opening possessions. And, and whether it's just that possession or even deeper into the half, sometimes it's 15 to 30 plays. That had to be one in there where they call a shot play. Go for the big one, and they got it done. Koo able to connect on the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. The drive there only spanning three plays, and the Falcons score to cap it off. Following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. Oh, a good looking return set up here. Khalif Raymond, he might score. He will score. Touchdown, Lions. We'll go ahead and strap in, partner. <laughs> 
Less than two minutes in, had the score on the one side. A quick answer, though, to get the equalizer. Sometimes you get that sense of urgency that ratchets up, right? When you give up an early touchdown like that, you just know you're like, okay, how do we go back and equalize things? Can we get it done fast? And they absolutely did. Essentially, we're back to even, aren't we? Extra point by Patterson, up and good. And we are tied at seven. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. From his end zone, here comes Patterson. And he returns this to the 22. So for the second time in this one, we get set to see the Falcons offense. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Now a second and ten. Ritter will set up to throw it. And a quick throw here. That's complete. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. So the completion there. But Charles, looking at this defense, certainly in for a tough task here this afternoon. What are some of the keys for them if they want to come out on top? Well, the first thing, partner, is they just allow the completion there. They don't want to get a string of those going. Let him get his confidence. Let him get into the rhythm of the game, the flow of the game, and all of a sudden, he's feeling like he can do no wrong. You want to really get after his timing a little bit, knock a few balls away, and make things uncomfortable for him. Because if he feels relaxed, you are in for a tough afternoon. Parker, we've got ourselves a ball game, and those guys on defense, they came to play. Slipped up on their first series, but they're definitely settling in now and letting it be known that points won't come so easy again. Well, the Lions offense getting ready to go to work here and under center, a man whose career has been rejuvenated a bit as of late. In season number eight now out of Cal, it's Jared Goff. Rumors of Goff's demise? Greatly exaggerated, it seems. Boy, what a big year he had last year. 29 touchdowns and led the Lions to their first winning season since 2017. Under his leadership, the Lions expect to make the playoffs for the first time in a few seasons. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. If you're in the offensive huddle, you're smiling after that play because you've certainly got them guessing now. Second and short, could they just hand it off for another big game? Or did they take advantage of this spot to take a big shot downfield? Line of scrimmage, the 43 on second and four. Again, they'll go ground with Montgomery. And he'll be stopped at the 46, gain of three. They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. Third and two, golf. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. 11 yards there and a line first down. I like how they work the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, He's not even going to catch the football. He's going to run away from me a little bit, and that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. On first and ten, golf. 
They'll let this go deep for St. Brown. And this is caught. And did he get in? No. They'll mark him out at the one-yard line. A big play there for Detroit. Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. And who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have... And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Detroit. David Montgomery punching it in from a yard away. And the Lions have taken the lead. Nice job of polishing off that drive, but all the credit there goes to that play prior. Yeah, it certainly does, because after that big play, I think resistance almost felt futile at that point, didn't it? And the very next play, they come right back, quick, fast, and in a hurry, and put it in the end zone. Extra point by Patterson, up and good. And that makes the score 14-7. to Here are the Lions now as they line up and kick this one away. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The Falcons back out getting set for this next drive. The last series for a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. Now a throw here to his running back. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. Good yardage after the catch. Is that play good for 30 and a first? He was not the primary target. They expected to get the ball downfield. Instead, checked it down. An old coach of mine used to say to us all the time, when they check it down, that should end the down. In this case, though, he foiled that in a big way and turned it into a big play. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. Here's Ritter. And this one is going to be off the mark, too far out in front. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice, or maybe even routes versus air, because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. Second down and a run by Robinson. And a good job of finding the open space to run as he's down close to the 30 here. It's a gain of 11, and the Falcons pick up the first. We really didn't have any doubt that he was going to be one of the top-rated rookies coming into the league, especially as a runner. And he's given us no reason to change our minds. That's a big-time run, and the production that he showed us in college is translating very well into the National Football League. A short gain here, maybe a yard to the 29. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you've got to continue to try and run it and try and keep the defense honest. You mean or else they'll just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. Here's a second and nine now for the 29. Back to throw, Ritter. And his throw is going to be incomplete. When I watched that play, I thought about what my coaches have told me in the past, the biggest teaching point. Get your head around, locate the football, so you can make a play on it while it's in the air. That's exactly what he did there. That was nice. They got to get it to the 21 here on third down. Ritter. Throwing left side here, and it's complete. Two yards on the pickup there, and that'll bring up fourth down. Partner, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. So on fourth down, Ritter heads to the sideline. Young Way Koo gets set for the Atlanta field goal. Koo knocks this one through the post, and they'll cut the lead back down to four now at 14-10. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks, you tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? 
A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take, punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. The putter pinion now to kick this one away. Back onto the field come the Lions for their second overall drive. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And partners, a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now. But let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. Yeah, because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. To throw on second down is gone. And that'll be caught by St. Brown. So five yards here, five on the play. And that'll bring up what looks to be a third in inches. Can't be more than a half a foot. They'll run it. Here's Montgomery. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. 40 yards rushing for him now, and he's carried the ball just five times. Brandon, they're still in the lead, but momentum's certainly been going the opposite direction. So to me, that's a really important pickup there on third down. Try and regain some confidence, and you're right. They need to stem the tide a little bit. That certainly helped. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 43. Here's Gaul. Well, he short arms that one just a bit. It's low and incomplete. They'll put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one, forced the incompletion. That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely. Freeze up your guys elsewhere. Back to the air. Goff on second down. Throw left side caught by LaPorta. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 32-yard line. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Now gone. And his throw is incomplete. Not a great start dropping his first target, but let's face it, it won't be his last chance because he'll get opportunities to make up for that one throughout this game. Here's second and 10 now from about the 32. Up the middle, it's Montgomery. And he'll get this down to about the 30, 31 yard line. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. Throwing on third, golf. Working the middle of the field, he's got a man complete. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 17-yard line. A third down conversion with a strong gain of 14. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Going up the gut, Montgomery. And he'll be stopped after a gain of only a couple down to the 15-yard line. He's had success on this drive, but not on this play. Finally, they bowed up defensively. I think they were determined not to let him take it pretty much all the way down the field. Yeah, it looks like they handled their run responsibilities correctly this time. When we call them run fits, everyone was in the right place. 
Now it's Goff off the bootleg. It's caught. Mitchell. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And now we've got a third and three. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Goff on third down. There's the point out. He's got it. Touchdown, Lions. Ten yards on the touchdown pass as his guys are able to extend their lead. We're still in the first quarter, but it's apparent they're going to have to come up with a different defensive game plan for him because right now he's kind of having his way against that defense and has added a touchdown to the list. How do you slow him down? They're going to have to mix up some coverages, maybe change who's guarding him. Extra point by Patterson, up and good. And that makes it a 21-10 game. to the 20 yard line as he's down at the 19. Atlanta prepped and ready for its next possession. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive in with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. A good gain on first has him set up with second and just a couple of inches now from the 29. Ritter off to play fake. He'll get this into the hands of Hodge. And he's out of bounds, able to take this one up to the 35. He had the touchdown earlier. This one's going to get him a first down. Ritter from the gun. Looking middle, and that's complete. That'll go for a gain of seven, and that'll make it second down. Play action. Here's Ritter. And that is incomplete, but a penalty flag is down. This could possibly be a push off. Try to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. Looked like some hands both ways. They got it on the offense. And sometimes there's a fine line between being the receiver and the DB, and he knocked that one away. Might have caused an incompletion that could have been an interception. And now the throw here is incomplete, and with that, we come to the end of the first quarter of play. An entertaining start to this one. More to come on EA Sports. Second quarter now, Falcon football. The offense on third down, just one for three thus far. This is going to be third and 13. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. So after three drives and three touchdowns combined between these two clubs, finally we get a defensive stop. Yes, and welcome to the party, defensive players. I'm glad to have you because for a while there, it almost felt like it was 11 going downfield on air. Okay, so to be able to have someone come up, make a stop, now we got a football game going. The punt team on now as Pinion sends this one away. Taken in at the 22. 43 yards on the punt, return of four, and the Lions will take over. David Montgomery and the Lions about set to begin this next series. He's been good, his guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. 
And he doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back. And that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Here's Goff. A little short pass here taken in by Laporta. And he's out of bounds, able to take this one up to the 35. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. Now they need two. Here's third down. And they'll let their fullback try and push the pile. And he is going to have the Lions first down. At least it appears that way. And he got it by maybe the length of a football. And how about that on third down? So many different directions an offense can go. Throw it out wide to the receivers, get it to their speedy running back. They changed up everything and handed it to the fullback, and he surprised them all and picked up a first down. First down, here's the run with Montgomery. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. Well, I think after that run, the defense get back in the huddle and looking at each other and maybe starting to question their confidence a bit. They gave up a significant run, six yards, and now you're saying to yourself, how do we stop them, and do I have enough confidence to make a play? Goff now to throw. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. Oh, man, for him to be that wide open and drop it, sometimes you have just too much time on your hands, right? You end up thinking way too much and your hands get shaky. And yes, he's a tight end, but that's a catch he should have made. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. That might be the third down stop that they needed because they've had a lot of trouble slowing down this offense in the first half. This might be their opportunity to get off the field. On fourth down, Jack Fox on to punt for Detroit. This will be fielded at the 17. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt, and it will be Falcon football. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. Ritter and the Falcons now with a first and 10 at their own 23. He'll get it to Robinson to begin the drive. That's to about the 28, second down coming up. The passing game's been working quite well so far, but the running game's been a little bit of a struggle, and that's a surprise to me. Typically, when you can throw it, you've opened up lanes for your runners. Now a second and six. Ritter with it after the play fake. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far and brings up third down. And tapping those toes, he tried to get both inbounds. He could not do it, though. In tap dance parlance, could not complete the shuffle. All right, needed to get that shuffle down with both feet, not just one. Is that what they say? There it is. You know, put a little sand down on the stage. <laughs> taken down but not before they reach the 50. A well executed 22 yard game. And time to give some credit to the big fellows, the offensive line here because you've got to have good protection on crossing routes because you've got to give your receiver time to work all the way across the field. That time be able to scan the field spot as receiver moving left to right and make a good accurate throw. Thank you guys. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Throwing right, and that's complete. And this will leave them a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. And now we'll get a stoppage here. There appears to be an injured Falcon on the field. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside.
And from the 41, this is second and a yard. Ritter now. That is incomplete. Well, the incompletion, but now we also have an injured player. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. This is third and one. Very likely four down territory, even if they don't get it, though. Robinson will try to pick it up. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. Too long for a field goal, too short to punt that in-between range, and they'll go for it on fourth down. They'll try and run for it. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Just a gain of three, but they'll certainly take it as they convert on fourth down. Fourth and inches in plus territory, that seemed like a prime spot to go for it. It certainly did, and there's so many things that go into it. Are you too far away for a field goal, but not far away to punt it? Do you just feel like your offense is better? I just think in today's NFL, offense feels like it has to take care of the football, has to keep the ball, because scoring is up. You better maximize every possession. You trust your offense more than you trust your defense in today's league. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. No surprise, Robinson is looking like one of the best running back prospects we've seen in a long time. He became the face of the Atlanta football team the second he was drafted, and he should be ripping up big runs for them for years to come. On first and 10, it's Robinson. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. 11 more on that one, and another first down. The running game's played a huge part in getting them down to this point on the field. I say stay with it. Keep pounding the football. Keep driving. Keep grinding. Yeah, even down in the red zone, keep going for it. No doubt about it. Dance with what brung you. They'll run with Robinson. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. A pickup of four on first down. It'll be second and goal. This is a critical sequence here for this offense. Things really haven't gone their way so far. This could be their chance to get back into it, but they've got to find a way to punch this ball in. From the two now, second and goal. One of the tight ends comes in motion. Robinson will score. Touchdown Atlanta. Well, he'd been the workhorse on this drive, and it would have been unfair to bring someone else in to finish the job. So they go back to him again, and he delivers with a touchdown run. Now Young Way Koo for the extra point. And he's got it to make this a 21-17 game. So that one a long 11-play drive. And it was B. John Robinson who took it home with a touchdown run. Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. Here's Raymond bringing it out. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Now the Lions offense, they get ready to head back out there. No points last time out. They were forced to punt, if you remember, but no time to dwell on that. They've still got the lead here and a chance to add to that here. First and 10 as this new drive starts. They'll start on the ground with Montgomery. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. They had three tight ends in on that set, and they were really good at blocking for their running back. And give them a lot of credit because in football nowadays, 
Tight ends coming out of college often don't block very often. These guys have really developed into superior blockers, and that's why they use them in this formation so often. Yeah, he's able to force his way through one man, but he can muster only about a yard on the play. Second down. Oh, there's plenty of traffic waiting for him up the middle. But give him credit, he tried barreling through anyway. They're fortunate to get a yard out of that one. From the 34-yard line, here's a second and nine. They'll keep pounding here with Montgomery. And this will wind up the Lions' first down as good running gets them to about the 44. I'm not sure how much more evidence they need, partner, than to understand that if they don't start to slow him down, it's going to be a long afternoon here at the stadium because he is just shredding them at this point. And let's face it, coming into the game, they knew he would be the focal point of their attack. This is going to take an 11-man unit on the defensive side to start making plays. And a solid run here as he'll pick his way down to the 42-yard line. 86 yards on the ground so far for Montgomery. It's a first down. And this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack. And guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. They'll go with a rookie from Alabama. It's Jameer Gibbs. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. I thought he did a nice job there setting an edge and make sure nothing could get to the outside. But he decided that wasn't enough for him. Worked his way back inside and made the tackle on the ball carrier. They'll try the air now with Goff. That's complete to the portal. Pushes the lead up to 11. So the drive there took six plays. And the end result, a Detroit touchdown. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. The B. John Robinson and the Falcons back onto the field. The Omen's effort on that last drive. Seven carries, got the touchdown as well. And the O-line probably got a little extra oxygen on the sideline in between. And deservedly so, because they were also calling for him to continue to get the ball because there's a rhythm that gets established, right? When you're running it well and the, and the back's getting the ball and he's in sync and reading blocks and the offensive line wants to continue to pound away. Haven't met an offensive lineman yet that likes to pass block more than he likes to run block. And that last drive, we saw the, the end result, didn't we? Yep, and all were rewarded with a trip to pay dirt. Ritter to throw it. To the sideline and incomplete. So it looked like maybe his third or his fourth read on his progression. Just trying to find his outlet man that time. Ends up leading him just a bit too much. And this offense on third down today. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and nine. That one deep for London. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Early on, the running game's been working well, and the offensive line has been pleased by that. The thought process there, catch those safeties creeping up, trying to help against the running game. They tried to hit them over the top unsuccessfully. So on now is the Clemson man, Bradley Pinion, to punt this one away.
Fielded at the 33. So out now come the Lions. And that last drive was very, very balanced, pretty methodical. You think they go that route again? I'm always of the school that until they stop me from doing something, I'm going to continue. And I think that that's exactly what they'll look to do. But the beauty is the balance that they've created sets up opportunities for big plays. Looks like a run, turn into a play action, and throw one deep. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out, and by a few inches, that'll be a first down. One of my old teammates called me the other day when he was watching the game. He's like, man, trying to watch an NFL game and trying to account for their passing game? That's difficult. And just when you think you get everything covered, here comes a back out of the backfield. And in this case, he picks up a first down. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. He was waving as hard as one of the football, but he dropped it. And that reminds me of a story you told me from your days at Tennessee. We don't need to mention the other guy's name, but when he dropped an open pass that you blew coverage on, what'd you say to him? Yeah, it's really not right since I blew coverage, but <laughs> since he dropped the pass, I said, well, maybe next time he'll just walk it out here and hand it to you. Would that be easier? He wasn't, real, th he wasn't real thrilled with that answer. Uh, cold blooded. Cold blooded. <laughs> And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. He's been a busy man here in this one, and they're showing off some nice footwork to stay in bounds. And with those types of catches and the volume that we've seen in this game, wouldn't you keep him busy as well? I would. Of course. you got to <laughs> keep throwing it to him. He keeps making plays. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. Third down at six. To the air again, Goff. They'll set up the screen to Montgomery. Good contain, no gain on the screen, and it'll bring up fourth down. And I know that one didn't work out the way they thought, but I don't think it was a bad time to call this play. You're thinking on third down, you might possibly see some pressure. You might see a blitz. So they tried to set up the screen, but that one was well read, and they stopped them for no gain. Jack Fox out to punt here on fourth down. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. Here are the Falcons as their offense heads back onto the field. And Charles, we'll see what they can do here. Not a ton of time left, but enough certainly to get points out of this drive. And they need them right now because they're trailing. Yeah, this is exactly why you practice a two-minute drill all through camp and at least one practice each week before a game. A minute left, more than enough time to string a few completions together, reach the end zone, and then make that walk back to the locker room just a little more animated. Whenever I see a drop like that, I have to kind of take a step back and check myself a little bit. So used to seeing those big guys make big time spectacular plays that when they drop one, I have to remind myself, we ask a lot out of these guys. Block and catch the football, not easily done in today's NFL. Meanwhile, Ritter's throw into the hands of Pitts here. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. First down, here's Ritter. The throw here right sideline falls incomplete. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. Darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Another throw coming up here for Ritter. They'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this first half. Ritter and the Falcons need an answer and a big play here on third and long following the sack. On third down, Robinson. And they will bottle him up behind the line and now will they use a timeout? The Lions will use the first of their timeouts. So as they talk it over, we step aside. Now here's Bradley Pinion now. A 
We'll call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And they will take over first and 10. The Lions now taking over late in this first half. And with a two-score lead already, they may just look to get this thing to the locker room. Now a first down throw, gone. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Gibbs. The Lions now gonna use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 27 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. Second down and four. Out of the gun, gone. A little short pass here taken in by LaPorta. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. Eighth catch for him now. He's been a big factor. And it's a first down. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. 23 yards on the play. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case, the feet, doing a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. Throwing again is gone. That's going to be caught by Josh Reynolds. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. On the right hash, it's a 43-yard attempt. Patterson's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So a capper there to a pretty good first half. And I love the way that they put a chokehold on the clock and pretty much drained everything before they put the field goal on the board as they headed into the half. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. So we've reached halftime here in Detroit with the Lions out on top. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, back to you too in just a bit, but first, Welcome everyone to downtown Orlando and our EA Sports Halftime Report. The Lions got a very strong performance out of their quarterback, Jared Goff. He fired his guys into the lead with two first half touchdown passes as they were looking like a well-oiled machine in the first half of play. Okay, coach, thanks as always to you and the gang in Orlando as we welcome everyone back in for quarter number three. in the lead and they're going to get the football first as well as the second half is underway here's Raymond bringing it out and he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20 
The Lions offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. But Charles, for them, pretty good first half on the ground. They had some success running the ball in quarters one and two, and they've got the lead. Now a chance to expand upon that lead here with their first drive of the third quarter. Yeah, believe it or not, you and I have noticed that this great game of football has shifted towards pass first, run second. So for me, it's really nice to see some of these teams keeping the ground game is a big component of their offense, and it's working pretty well for them now. And let's face it, they can continue to do damage with it, and in addition, it sets up the pass game really well for them, too. On second down, here's Gibbs. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. Five men in the secondary now for the Falcons on third down. Now golf. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have the Lions first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I don't care how many times we say it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trait in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. On first and ten, Goff. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Not his best throw there, but where we sit right now in the third quarter, he's had a pretty good game throwing the football. He certainly has, and it's not exactly at the point where we're doing four-minute offense yet. But they've got to think about, I'm not going to say milking the clock, but understanding clock management here on out. Second and 10, golf again. And that'll be caught by St. Brown. And he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. They threw the screen to the perimeter, but to no benefit at all. Tackled behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of yardage. They need 12 here. It's third down. Goff throwing again. That is incomplete. Well, it's too early to figure out what kind of adjustments this defense made at halftime, but that's a good start to the second half. They cannot afford to give up more points and fall further behind, so well done to force the punting situation here. Here comes the Lions punter now as he's on here to punt it away. This is fielded at the 27. Seven yards on the return after a punt of 39. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. Here comes the Falcons offense. It's their first possession of the second half now. Falcons first and 10 here as Ritter gets them ready at the 34. And boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. And when you're running the football, one thing you don't want to see is a big boy coming up there and swallow you whole in those D tackles and nose tackles. No, you're actually counting on your big boys to protect you from them. But on that play, the defensive tackle had the leverage, and he won the battle. No gain, correct? No gain. Ritter. And he's got it to Patterson complete. Touchdown, Falcons. Cordero. 66 yards and the Falcons have got it back to within a score that's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game and you know that there's an emphasis on their side hey we know this we know where we are but sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard you don't get the score a perfect combination of urgency yet relaxed enough to get it done Extra point by Koo, up and good. And that'll cut the lead down to a touchdown.
And following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. The Lions offense set to take over. And their lead cut in half by that touchdown a moment ago. They are up seven as they begin this drive first and 10. To Montgomery to begin the drive. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Big Calais Campbell fighting through to make the play in the backfield. I'm getting a sense that the momentum of this game is changing since the break. Nice play there, and this D is fired up. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. They'll try the middle with Montgomery. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss there, now third and 14. I'll tell you what, this defense hasn't played its best, but they're still right in this football game. And if they keep making plays just like that, they're going to give their offense a chance. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. Back to throw, Goff. They've got his man, complete! And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Able to convert on third and 14, a terrific play call. I don't care what level of football you play, this one was a universal, wasn't it? When we were kids and we played touch football, remember we get in these positions and you just say, everybody go along and hope someone would come free. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. And off comes to Montgomery. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Nice chunk of yards on first down. It really opens up your options for what you want to do on second. You can go right back to him and hope he explodes or sucker the defense in before throwing over the top. Second down and six now. To throw is gone. He completes it to Jones. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible, hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage, and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. Goff on first down. He'll leave it for Montgomery complete. Short completion, just four yards, and that'll bring up second down. And a nice gain and a broken tackle along the way, and really we shouldn't be surprised, should we? That's what runners do, especially the best ones. They break tackles and gain extra yardage. Second and six. From the gun, here's Goff. That's into the hands of Reynolds. He'll go down as a gain of six. And third and one now. Here's Goff. Work in the middle of the field. And he is going to have a Lions first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. That's not the first time they've looked his way when they've needed a big play. He's been the go-to guy all game long. And they get the hook up again on third down to keep this drive alive. A give. This is Montgomery. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. I have zero rooting interest in either team in this game. I only want a good game. But with all the offense we've seen from them tonight, it's kind of nice to see the defense step up and make a big play. Yeah, I was wondering if they were ever going to get him in the backfield. Nice to see him get a stop. To throw on second down is gone. His throw incomplete. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent, and that allows you to make a play on it, and oftentimes, knock it away. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. 
gone. And that is incomplete. But the pressure there on third down, forcing the errant pass. Fourth down coming up. Well, I think he's as fine with that incompletion as a quarterback can be, in all honesty. He avoided his first sack of the game, and he did have a chance of connecting for yardage, just unable to on that throw. A 39-yard attempt. Patterson's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So three points uh, response there to that opening touchdown in this third quarter. And that's an important three, both in terms of adding to your lead, but also letting the other guys know you're not going to just come out in the second half and take over. this one away and this take it in at the goal line and they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27 Atlanta regains possession of the football a strong showing their last time out they scored the touchdown but Charles they look up and they're still down double digits so you feel like just to keep pace this drive probably needs to end in the end zone as well. Yeah, and I think the best move for them is to not worry about how far they are down on the scoreboard, but to just remember the last drive and how it ended. Go ahead and try and repeat that. Then you can look at the scoreboard and see where this game is. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. If you're a coach, you'll absolutely take that run every time on first down because it really sets you up to go in a number of directions here on second. Second and five. Here's Ritter. He'll get this into the hands of Hodge. That'll put him right at 99 yards receiving now as he's got a first down. It's a gain of six. First down, Falcons. A give left side to Robinson. And boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. Being strong up the middle is imperative. I don't care what your sport, but in football, when you've got a D tackle, it can contribute not only to occupying bodies, but also making plays on the ball carrier. That's when you have the cornerstone of a solid run defense. On second down, another shot for Robinson. And some nifty running here as he'll take this across midfield and down to the 47. 74 yards rushing for him now on 17 carries. Absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. And they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. So second and ten now here in the third quarter from Detroit. Second down and a run by Robinson. He'll get about four here down to the 43-yard line. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offense coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it. Thank you. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Ritter now. That one thrown across his body, and it's incomplete. Here's Bradley Pinion now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. Personal foul. 
Roughing the kicker. Defense. And that hurts. If it was running into the kicker, wouldn't be a first down. Roughing, it is a first. And just think about the differences between the two. Running into the kicker almost feels inadvertent, just a small tap, so to speak. But when you rough him, usually bodies are hitting the ground and flying all different places. And the difference is five yards or 15. And in this case, that's a big play. And a missed tackle there as he pushes forward for a gain of four. I think that run gives us evidence that the defense is getting a little bit tired out there. They've been out in the field for a long time, and that last run, they just cut right through them. From the 24 now, here's second and six. They'll run again here with Robinson. And not much, maybe a yard down to the 23. Facing third and five. Back to throw, Ritter. He's got his running back out of the backfield. Touchdown, Falcons! Cordero Patterson with now his second touchdown of this third quarter. And the Falcons are able to cut into this deficit here in the final minute of the third. That is today's NFL, isn't it? If you're going to be a running back in this league, you've got to be complete to stay on the field, at least for those three downs we talk about. Got to be able to catch it, which he's doing quite well in this one. Two touchdowns already. Yeah, a little unconventionally. He hasn't been able to cross the goal line as a runner, but as you say, twice as a receiver. Ku able to connect on the extra point, and the lead is down to a field goal. Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. Detroit's offense ready to take over. Still enjoying the lead here in the third quarter despite their defense giving up that last touchdown. Now they'll see if they can get the equalizer here on this drive. Now Goff on first down. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Montgomery. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. So the completion results there in nine yards. And they'll have a second and one forthcoming. Three quarters in the books. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now at Ford Field. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point, just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. On second down, Montgomery, and they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there, and on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously, but at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. First down, Lions on a pickup of 13. the gun, Montgomery. And a good run here as he'll rumble all the way down to the 40-yard line. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. I think we're seeing the effect that runs like that are starting to have on this game. They're a little bit slower. That front seven reacting to the football, almost like body blows in boxing. Slowing them down, and they're really starting to take over in this game. On first down, gone. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. 
One thing you hope to see out of a rookie tight end is a real concentration when the ball's in the air, and I'm not sure that he didn't, but he has to be prepared for people making a play on it when that ball's up for grabs. Here's second and 10. Up the middle, it's Montgomery. Oh, what a juke into space! And maybe a little over-pursuit there as he's able to take this down to the 25-yard line. 119 yards rushing for him now as his sensational afternoon continues. And carries like that, that's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. And these guys certainly are not hiding what their intention is. They're absolutely showing it. They're definitely not going to sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. Now a first and 10 at the 11. That's to the tight end, Laporta. The result, only four yards there on the play. And that's going to bring up second down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? On second down, here's Goff. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. That pass just a little bit off. It looked like maybe he tried to force it in there. Game speed, always different, no matter what you do in practice. Can't simulate it, right? So your decision-making, everything has to be a little bit quicker. Sometimes it can throw you off until you adjust. Throwing on third, gone. down there and makes this a two-score game. But as we've seen, no lead is safe in this one with the way these two offenses have lit up the scoreboard. I would imagine that on their sidelines, they're both yelling at their defenses, hey, you want to get involved here? One big play from you, that could win the game for us. Extra point by Patterson, up and good. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. Here are the Lions now as they line up and kick this one away. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Now the Falcons offense, they get ready to head back out here. And you figure after giving up that last touchdown, you know, they trail by two scores here in the fourth quarter. This drive becomes very critical. They begin the drive with Robinson. There's Robinson showing the flash. And they work this well upfield across the 45. That good for 22 and a first down. Man, these guys may not win this ball game, but you certainly can't fault the effort of this man here today. He's been a real thorn in their sides all afternoon. And that last carry puts him over the 100-yard mark. Now Ritter to throw on first down. And the Lions pressure too strong. Down he goes. Aleem McNeil never giving up. He works his way to the QB for a loss of 12. Well, many times when you talk about mobile quarterbacks, you get the sense that they feel like they can get out of any bad situation. They keep moving around and trying to emulate guys like the Scrambler or the Dodger. 
Instead, they keep losing yardage and losing yardage and digging themselves a hole that they can't get out of. That huge loss on the sack makes this job much more difficult. It's now second down and 22 yards to go. Looking to throw it here, Ritter. Short throw to Smith. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple of scores, and they've really got to get some yards in chunks, and they know the defense doesn't want to give those up, but they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? So now third and 10, a big play to start the drive, but nothing since. A Ritter back to throw. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And to the 49-yard line, but no further. And obviously, he is well short of the first. Three yards, all they could muster there, and it'll bring up fourth down. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. This offense converted once on fourth down earlier. Now they're out there again to try once more. Fourth down, big play. Here's Ritter. That is caught, and he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. The time to pull out the stops is now, and they convert there on fourth down. Felt compelled to go for it there on fourth down, trailing in the fourth quarter. They got it done. And there's always a lot of pressure on a fourth down call. Doesn't matter the distance. He stopped to get it done, as you noted, and they did. So they convert on fourth, and now from just outside the 30, here's first and 10. They'll run this one right with Robinson. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. This second and four. Again, it's Robinson. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. Just a gain of a yard there, and now will be third down. But when you go from second to four to third and three, that just tells you who won that battle on the last play, huh? Yeah, first round went to the offense, second round the defense. This offense so far on third down, they've had a lot of chances, but not much success, converting only three times. Here it's third and three. Robinson will try to pick it up. Oh, well, they hit him in the backfield, and he will not escape. And that is not going to get it done. A loss of a yard, and it brings up four. You know, it's become cliche, but we have seen it and observed it. When runners have days like what we're seeing right now, they often take their offensive linemen out for steaks afterwards, don't they? They all go buy them dinner. But after a play like that, he might reduce it. Might go to the corner and just grab a hot dog or two, huh? Hey, I mean, they've still been blocking for him well in this game. They don't get one mulligan up front. Okay, so what we're saying then is we're going petite filet <laughs> instead of porterhouse. Eight How's ounce. That? Eight ounce is good. All right, just check it. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. And his guys will get the football right at the 20 yard line. And Detroit getting set to go now. They're holding on right now to that slim advantage in a one score game. And you hear a lot about two minute offense and four minute offense. Obviously, the four minute offense applies here. How do they run that effectively? Yeah, really, what the four minute offense is, is you're just trying to grind the clock. So you want consistent gains, steady gains. Doesn't have to be big plays, but it has to be plays that gets first downs and keeps the ball away from the opponent. But certainly, throwing the ball is in the mix here. It certainly is. Just make sure that you're careful with it. And again, get those first downs, keep possession of the football. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. They run Montgomery. They're going to 
snuff this play out behind the line. We have not seen that much today. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. So with your team leading in the fourth quarter, you know you've got to run the football. They know you've got to run the football. Sometimes that means there's nowhere to run the football. They'll go to Montgomery to try to wind some clock. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. This will be a loss of three, and now a much tougher third down looming. And this is why the head coach gets paid the big bucks. Look at where they are in this situation, partner. Do you throw the ball here in a long-distance situation? Do you run it again and trust your defense and make sure you take care of the ball and punt it away? What kind of options do you have here, and what do you trust more on your team? Yeah, they may have just pushed him back into that throwing situation. We'll see. Critical play in this football game, because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock, really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Okay, ready? Ritter and the Falcons now with a first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Timing is crucial in any route thrown. But when you throw an out, so many things are going through the mind of the receiver. Catching the ball, timing it up with the quarterback. Are my feet going to get down inbounds? On that play, all those things going through his head might have caused him to drop it. Ritter now on second down. And his throw here is incomplete. That was a classic example of trying to run with the ball without securing the catch. He was thinking about those rack yards instead of making the catch first and then taking off. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Ritter. the 45 he has a first down and that catch will also put him over 100 yards receiving now on the afternoon i like the design that we're seeing right there this is what they need down by a touchdown here in the fourth they just need to keep working their way downfield and when they see openings take their shots first down here's ritter and that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. Well, he certainly didn't like what he saw at all from the coverage on his primary reads, and he didn't even have any luck trying to get back to his safety valve. Give defense a credit. Coverage was in lockdown mode everywhere. They'll try again here, second and 10. Looking to throw once more, here's Ritter. Caught out left side by Robinson. And he goes out of bounds. It looks like right at the 50. The sound reverberating here in the dome. This is third down. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. I think we're both wondering if we were going to see them try and push it deep downfield, facing a one-possession deficit late, and they certainly didn't disappoint. They gave it an effort. Here we go. This is fourth down. Ritter on the fourth down try. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a Falcons first down. And that wasn't easy, but they do wind up converting a fourth and seven to keep this drive moving. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Falcon football as we welcome you back. 
They come up on a first and ten, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. To the air again, it's Ritter. Going for Kyle Pitts again. He's got him again. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. That's a nice job right there, partner, because they were able to work down the middle of the field, working in the seams, because I think defensively, they were guarding the sidelines, trying to keep them from getting out of bounds. They took what they gave them, and it was successful. Plenty of time. All three timeouts still remain. Here's first and ten now. down but this one lines up to be incomplete Ooh, that's certainly not the worst thing it stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit now i expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle so they're ready if a tackle happens in bounds again from the 15 second and 10 robinson up the middle he will push his way down to about the 14. An incompletion, now a short pickup. That's not going to do it. Yeah, you've got to get to the line of scrimmage quickly, get set up, and aim downfield. Work to do here with a crowd at fever pitch. Third and nine. Ritter looks to throw it. Throw left side, there's London. And oh, he's just going to be short here, barely. Maybe by a half a foot. It'll be fourth and inches. First things first here, they got to pick up the first down. And remember, it is fourth down, so they've got to pick up a completion here. Otherwise, this one's over. Here it is, fourth and inches. Ritter looking to throw here on fourth. Escaping the pressure. And yes, he's into the end zone. So they get the late score they needed. And now the extra point can tie this thing up in the final minute. Nothing like understand where your escape hatches are as a quarterback. Here he's looking, but he knows he doesn't want to force anything. So when nothing avails itself, he slips past the rushers, takes it right up the middle, and takes it into the end zone. Don't forget the extra point. It's up and good. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. This one, all we could have asked for. All tied, final minute as it kicks away here. Here's Raymond bringing it out. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Here's the Lion offense now as they get ready to take over. Well, partner, here it is. They've got the chance to win the game. You'd have to think they need to get it near the opposite 40 to have a chance to kick a game-winning field goal. We'll see what they can do. And you're right about that, because if we look at it in macro, that's what it looks like. But I think in micro, the head coach has already asked his special teams coach, what is he feeling? What does he think? Where does he want the football? What's the yard line we have to get? And he's already relayed that to his quarterback and his offense. They know what the goal is. Now the key, can they get there? Another try, second and ten now. A give to Montgomery out of the gun. And this is not going to be what they needed. They get a few here, but now third down as the clock runs. I really like the vision he displayed on that play because he saw there wasn't a lane to completely break off a huge gain. So he found where there was the most space and got what he could. A nice dirty run that's a positive play for the offense. On third down, they go Montgomery. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. Final whistle blows, and we need some extra time here to decide who will be the victor. 60 minutes, just not enough some days to decide who's going to win the game.
So possession in overtime first goes to the Atlanta Falcons, and we are back underway. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. The Falcons ready to take over. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go-around. Ritter, and that one going to come up short. Low throw. He released that awkwardly. It almost looked like a pitcher who gripped his fastball a little too hard and let it go late, and it bounced in front of the plate. Yeah, one of those fastballs that ends up at 57 feet, not 60 feet, 6 inches. Just a little short with the arm, which is unusual because we saw him in warm-ups. He's got a big, strong arm when he delivers it with confidence. Straight ahead, it's Robinson. And yeah, he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. And force the incompletion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in an expected passing situation. What will they draw up to try to keep this opening drive of overtime moving? Third and seven. Ritter cannot escape, and they bring him down. Aiden Hutchinson able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. Boy, every time I see speed like that off the edge, Charles, I just don't know how these offensive linemen do it. They, I would think that they would get called for holding every play, and maybe they should have been called for holding on that one. Yeah, maybe not just holding, but sometimes you end up setting back in the offensive backfield a little bit farther to try and help you with the edge. That's a penalty as well. Sometimes you overset, they'll come inside of you. That's what speed does. It disrupts an offense, and right now, you've got to pay attention to this edge rusher on every single down. Fielded at the 43. It's a 39-yard punt, three on the return. And out will come the offense as they take over. So here come the Lions now. Well, their defense did the job, got off the field without giving up any points. And now, Charles, all they need here is a field goal, and they get the victory. Yeah, and this is the way I love overtime. I'm one of those really, really old-school guys that like sudden death right from the beginning. But well, we've got it now because any points wins the game. On defense, get a safety, a pick six, fumble return. You can win it as well. So I'm really looking forward to this series and see how both sides play it. Ball right on the 50-yard line. Here's the second down at six. Now Goff with his first throw in OT. A little short pass here taken in by Laporta. He's been big. Two touchdowns earlier. Now he's got a first down here. They go back to that well. He's had a great game. Defensively, they haven't been able to stop him. Same thing here in overtime. And sometimes that goes to the play caller's ego because a lot of times you have so many different plays you want to call. But when you spot a matchup that's working for you or a player that has the hot hand, keep giving it to them. That tells me you're mature as a play caller and it's working for them in overtime. And he did not want to go down there as he carries tacklers for a solid gain of nine. And he continues to pile up the yardage. That puts him over a buck 50 now. And this defense has really had its problems trying to keep him contained. Second down and a yard. That's thrown quickly out to Jones. Two yards on the pickup, and that's all they needed to move the sticks. So he hooked up with a veteran there, and in overtime, that's not a bad idea. Go with the age and the experience. Yeah, because sometimes the young guys, they give you the fresh legs and give you all that bounce. But in this type of a situation, sometimes those legs slow down a little bit as the enormity of the moment overwhelms them. The veteran guys, they tend to come through. Now this one over the middle into the hands of his tight end complete. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. From the 25, here's second down and three. Gone. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. Normally you think the tight end's going to be able to catch the football and handle that contact. But in this case, maybe a little too much target to hit. That one was timed well. Incomplete.
Goff on third down. Throw to St. Brown complete on the left side. And I don't think he got there. No. He's short by maybe a foot. Maybe. Call it fourth and inches. If this were baseball, we'd call this small ball. Instead of pushing it downfield, they throw a short pass trying to pick up the first down, but the defense rallies to the football and stops him short, bringing up a fourth down. Here we go on four. Gone. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Lions turned away on fourth down. And the Falcons' defense stands tall. They'll get the football back. So the defense has to stay out and get one more stop. They were able to do it, forcing the incompletion. So on their record, that goes down as a successful play. It doesn't matter how they got there, how it happened. They got it done. They're the ones that are jubilant. They start on the ground with Robinson here. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. A big chunk on the ground there, 27 yards. Well, partner, I have to say they caught him in the right defense there. Nickel set, fifth defensive back on the field, and they love to run against that because now you typically get a bigger blocker on a smaller defender. Yeah, because those DBs like you, they want the interception. They're not as worried about the running play, right? Not at all. <laughs> I, I, used to, I, I still remember being in school and one of my offensive line teammates used to say, boy, I love to come downfield and hit you little people. <laughs> Good run there. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. Ritter will set up to throw it. That's out wide here for Robinson. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. Two yards on the pickup, and that's all they needed to move the sticks. That's a pretty play there coming out of the backfield. But as that back, you've got to be conscious of making sure you're securing the football. When you get out in open field, sometimes you get a little loose with it as you're trying to get up ahead of steam. Make sure you keep it close to your body because those defenders are trying to punch it free. He does a nice job there protecting the ball and picking up a first down. And that's just a solid, good physical run there as he motors for nine yards. They've had some success here in overtime of this opening drive running the football right back to that well. And why not? When you have that kind of success, make them stop you. And until they do, keep going back to that well you just spoke about. I think there's more water there available to them. On second down, another shot for Robinson. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. They were not fooling around at all, were they? Second and short, and they brought out the heavy package. Almost felt like the super heavy package against that defense, didn't it? Yeah, I don't think they expected that much beef up front, and it turned into an easy first down conversion. On first and ten, it's Robinson. And only a yard this time as he's taken down right around the 26. So from the 26-yard line, here's the second and nine. Robinson with another carry. Call it a gain of four, and it'll leave him with a third down and six to go. And I know you, with every carry, especially in overtime, you're just saying, if you're that ball carrier, hold on to the football. Hold on to it, protect it, but not necessarily settle it, because you're trying to get to the end zone. You're trying to end the game right here. And I know the defensive guys poking, clawing, breaking, trying to knock the ball free and protect their end zone. Yeah, like you alluded to, especially this part of the field. Oh, and fine work there as he gets this thing down to the 11-yard line. 12 yards is the pickup. Good for a first down for the Falcons. A good run there off right tackle in an old-school NFL football. The right side, the offensive line, often known as the nasty side. The left side, usually the technical side. Kind of reminds me of the old Atlanta Falcons 2009-2010. That's how they constructed their offensive line.
Young Way Koo, all eyes fixated on the kicker. This to win it in overtime. And he got it. The kick is good in overtime. He's able to split the uprights. And the Falcons are going to win the game. Well, partner, you and I were excited for this one today and certainly had its moments. Some good execution at times by both of these offenses. Defenses both made some plays as well. And always a joy to be up here in the booth next to you, my friend. Yeah, it's a privilege to be up here in the booth next to you as well. Thanks for taking the time. And let's go ahead and get ready for our next one, right? I'll see you in the film room. Get that preparation started now.